Hi, I'm Dion. Welcome to my studio. Um, I'm going to be talking you through some activities, all from an exhibition at the Bodleian Library. So this is on at the moment, and it's a really lovely exhibition because it documents the story of um, the excavators who discovered Tutankhamun's tomb. So it tells a really, really interesting story through lots and lots of lovely pictures um, and drawings um, and photographs. And what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be taking a look at this image here for inspiration. So this image here um, was the, the site that the excavator who discovered um, Tutankhamun's tomb who was called Howard Carter and this is the first thing he saw when he came into the tomb and you can see all the amazing objects that are there. So he's also quite an interesting character because he was actually an artist um, before he started doing this for his job so he, he was actually an artist and he didn't have any academic training and then he discovered this. So I think he's uh, yeah very sort of inspiring to, to use as a starting point, but to look at these objects that he was met with when he walked into the tomb. So I had a look at this image and I thought, well, what do I feel most drawn to? And there are lots and lots of things to be looking at. So we have different sculptures, um, we have different treasure chests. There's these very, very interesting objects here which I think were used to store um, like cured meats and things like that. So that was quite a, a strange, <laughs> obscure collection of things there, but you might be quite drawn to the interesting shapes of these. We've got a very, very funky looking stool here that might be quite an interesting object to, to choose from. We've got these very exciting looking characters here, and then things like treasure boxes, stools, really lovely shapes so have a really good look and choose something that you find interesting now I felt particularly drawn to yeah this this character here um but I think the thing that really interested me wasn't necessarily the whole thing was um this head shape I just thought what an amazing amazing character um this piece is so that's what I'm using as my starting point and what I'm going to do is show you how to get started. So start with a um, blank sheet of paper and a pencil. I'm going to be using um, a graphite pencil, but just use a normal pencil would be great. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the sort of the simplified shapes that I can see in front of me in this picture. So I'm not worrying about things being realistic or anything like that. I'm thinking about what shapes can I see. Now, in this image here, it's almost like a kind of squashed rectangle for the head. So I'm gonna go with, with just that. I'm gonna go with a nice squashed rectangular kind of shape for the head. So there it is. It's a rectangle, but it's a bit squashed. <laughs> and then I'm gonna keep it just as, yeah, just as a head shape. So I'm just thinking about how my, draw, my sculpture could look. And then I'm going to take these lovely sort of horn shapes. And that's my really, really simple drawing of what I would like to make. Now, we are going to be using clay today. So the wonderful thing about sculpture is that you're taking something that's usually 2D and you're turning it into something that's 3D. But you're still, you're still drawing, but you're drawing with form. So you're drawing with shape. And it's very much about using your fingers, as you would with a, draw, a drawing tool, like a pencil, but you're using your fingers to make those shapes, those physical shapes. So we're going to start off with our air drying clay. Now, air drying clay is amazing because you don't have to think about having to use a kiln or anything like that to, um, to fire it. So it just it dries and then that's it. It will stay in that, in that form. Um, and you can do things like add PVA to give it a bit of a shine and stuff like that. But the main thing I would say is to not go too big, which can be really tempting, particularly when you see a nice big bag of clay or block of clay and you think, oh, I'd like to make a massive treasure chest or whatever it is you decide to make. But 
um, I'd like you to, to think more about your shape. So when you go smaller, it means you can focus more on creating the form, so the shape rather than worrying too much about how it's going to stand up or those those sort of structural things. So the bigger you go, the more problems you run into in that sense. So we're going to go nice and small and we're going to look at the shapes in our drawing. Now the main thing to do is to keep your clay nice and warm. So you need to warm it up and you also need to, it's a bit like if you were doing um, sports, you'd have a bit of a stretch. Same with using um, sculpture or drawing is that you need to get warmed up into, into what you're doing. So we're going to warm up our clay, we're going to warm up our hands so that we feel nice and connected to, to the surface of the clay and what we can do with it. I'd also recommend that you have a little bowl, I've got a bowl here in my studio, just a very small bowl just to have some water in so and you can use that if you can see mine's getting slightly dried out there and you can use it just to keep it keep it moving now once you've done that i'm going to get you to start looking at those shapes that you can see in your drawing so i'm going to start with my nice big triangle shape and i'm going to start moving my clay so i'm not going to use all of it i'm just going to use some of it and i'm going to start moving my clay to make that nice squished, nice technical term, squished triangle shape. And I'm gonna keep using my hands. So as you would be with a pencil, you're going to be using your hands to manipulate the clay into those shapes. So there's my nice squished triangle shape. I'm gonna keep using my water to smooth the clay and move it into those shapes that I'd like to make. I also quite like that that nose that's on the um, on the image. So I'm going to use my fingers to try and create a bit of a space there in between. If we have a look here on the picture, you can see there's this really interesting shape here. So I'm going to use use my hands to try and create those shapes. And it's really about that. So again, you're taking something that's 2D into 3D. So really using your hands. And if you have some nice clay tools to hand, you can use those to start um, moving in. If you're also connecting things, so I have some of those interesting sort of horny, horn kind of shapes. Um, I'm gonna be using the tools to help me connect those. So a good way of doing that is to really indent and then keep smoothing over with your hands and again with that water. So once you've connected all of your shapes by using lots of water and really it's a bit like if you were blending and mixing paint, you'd keep working over the top. You're doing exactly the same with the clay. So keep working over the top until those shapes are nice and connected. So I've got my, my head shape there. Um, and then we can start thinking about colour, but it's good to keep it simple. Um, and it might be that actually you don't really want to add a colour. So I'm going to go with gold. So I'm going to use gold paint and I'm going to suggest that you use something called dry brush technique. Now dry brush technique is exactly that. You're just using a brush that's dry and you're working over the surface. And the brilliant thing about dry brush technique is that it just hits those lovely relief shapes that are standing up. So I'm just going to work over the top of my sculpture with my dry brush. And I'm going to keep working over and over. And once I've done that, I'm then going to start thinking about um, any particular detail that I would like to add. So remember, this is your interpretation that you're taking something that's 2D, that's very flat, and you're creating your own 3D version. So it might be that you change things slightly or you add things, that's fine, that's called artistic license. <laughs> and you can um, yeah, use a slightly maybe thinner brush to start adding in some of those details. And I'm just going to carry on doing that. I'm going to really enjoy adding in my, my details, adding in maybe some of my patterns that I'd like to add once I've done my dry brush but keeping it really simple and keeping it just to a couple of colours. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm going to leave it to dry. And then if it wanted to live outside, you might like to add PVA, but if not, you can, you can leave it to dry. Um, 
and it might be that you like to leave it to dry a bit before you add your paint as well. So that's that's up to you. It depends how warm it is where you are and where you're making your sculpture. And I'm going to leave a photograph of the finished product so that you can see to get ideas to inspire you.